click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about the implementation of an atomicity and durability in the transaction. That means we have described the properties of atomicity and durability. Now today we will know that how we can implement these two properties in the transaction using some procedures. We will discuss the shadow copy as a procedure to implement these two features. Atomicity and durability are two inseparable features from each other on which the transaction is built on. That means a transaction is performed at all of its entirety or not performed at all. That is the atomic feature and the durable feature is the data that we are using for the addition is in consistent and durable data. That means when it will be stored in the disk, then it will be affect the update and also the data that we are storing it back to the disk will not lose any of this contents. So that is the feature of atomicity and durability. Now, to implement these two features in any of the transactions, there are many methods. Today we will talk about the most simple but also an extreme inefficient method. We will go for the inefficiency later, but first discuss the procedure of having implemented this atomicity and durability. The process is called shadow copy. The shadow copy of a database takes that if there is any transaction that is taking care of a particular access to a portion on the database, then it considered that the database is having only that file on which the transaction is based. Say for an instance, if TI belongs to the transaction part on any FI that belongs to the database DB. Now, the transaction TI that is taking care of FI, now it will consider that FI for all parts of this DB. So now the DB is divided into in any area, then we can say that F is a part of that area. So now we are having a database and a file that is considered to be a part of that database. Now when the transaction is pointing to this file, that means the transaction is accessing this file as a part of its database access. So there will be a shadow copy of this file. So what is a shadow copy? Before that we will introduce a term called pointer. Now a transaction will have a pointer that is known as a DB pointer. So now my DB pointer will point to the copy that the database, the transaction will access. Say that the database is considered to be copy the FI. So now my FI as the old copy of this database. So my DB pointer is pointing to the old copy of this database. Now whenever the transaction needs to access this particular portion FI, then what happens? It just copy this shadow copy into a new portion. Now for a transaction, this copy will be made entirely to a new file. So now a copy of FI will be made. So now we have made a new copy. Now when there is any update or any modification or any access from the transaction to this database, then it will be made to this new copy, not this shadow copy anymore. Now it becomes the shadow copy of that database. Why we are calling this a shadow copy, we'll introduce a little much later. Now when this new copy is being made, all this entirety of the database, now the updation or the modification will be made to it and now my DB pointer or the database pointer will point to this part of this copy while leaving the database of this old copy as the shadow copy. So now my DB pointer will point to this new copy instead of this 
old copy. Now we can say that when the updation is made to this new copy, so we consider it as an updated copy. Now that if we are having this updated copy, so this old copy of database will be deleted. And now this one becomes the shadow copy of the database. See, this one will be deleted as the old copy of database. This one is a new copy of the database that will be updated. And this one becomes the shadow copy, which is just left behind this pointer. Now what happens and how the transaction is performed to this, which can make this atomicity and durability. Now when the transaction is performing, it has started and it has completed or committed its execution. Then the new copy of this FI will be made written back to the database on this disk to have affected the transaction as completed by its own. So it is supporting this old copy. And now as we are maintaining the DB pointer first mate and shadow copy, and now then the new copy of the updated copy will be written back to the database. Now in the midst of this transaction, if there is any problem, then it can get back this old copy, which is to be deleted, but the shadow copy will remain there to as a part of the durable data. That means if the updated copy is lost in that way, we can refer to this shadow copy to get reference to the old data. So now we are having the shadow copy concept. Now let us describe the transaction in elaboratively for these three cases. So now we will consider our DB pointer in each of these cases. The first case is that the transaction is committed. So where my DB pointer will point to, it will point to my disk back to the database where it is having the entire database with an updated copy. So for the committed transaction, DB pointer will point to the disk on which the FI is there. Now in the second case, say for instance that the transaction has started but cannot commit its operation. So now my DP pointer will point to the shadow copy that is the old copy of the database. As we know that the atomic property of a transaction doesn't support any partial commitment of the transaction, so now it will not take in consideration the updation it has made to the new copy. The DP pointer will now point to the original shadow copy. Now the third case is, is divided into two sections. First that the commit is made to this new updation but it is not written back to the disk. Then what happens? Now in the third case, So now my update is on the new copy but not on the disk FI. That means the commitment or the log has not been written to the disk. So now where my DB star will point to? So according to the atomic nature, even if the data is completely updated onto the new copy, it will not be back onto the disk, then we cannot have the transaction considered as committed. Until and unless it is written back to the disk using the write ahead logging rule also, we will now point to this shadow copy of the database. Now let us consider the third case on this section 2. That the update is made on the new copy and the data is back written on the disk copy, but the disk is lost then what will happen? That we are having the old copy that it is deleted and now the shadow copy that it is pointing to and now the new copy that is being updated is being written to the disk. That means the new copy is also we are having. So in the shadow copy technique, the DB pointer will point to this new copy until and unless we are having a final disk copy of that update. See, the disk has written this update but not the disk is affected on this update. So now my DB pointer will point to this new copy, not the shadow copy.
Now see that the is written to the disk but has lost. So which nature it is satisfying? It is satisfying the durability that whoever having this new copy on this disk, it can now be taken to another non-volatile storage of this loss that it is performed on this disk copy. So now the shadow copy is being a procedure to provide the first two cases for this atomicity and the third case of this A and B case of the durability. So now we have implemented the atomicity and durability both. But the main disadvantage of the shadow copy technique, it is extremely inefficient. In what way it is inefficient? Rather than it is producing an implementation of this atomicity and durability, we are considering copying the entire database into as a new copy where the pointer is pointing to because the database is now considered to be the file. So now we are having the file as this particular database. So we need a larger memory area for each of the transaction that the database pointer will point to. And the second one is it will not consider any transaction that is completed on the new copy but not updated on this disk. Also it is considered as the non-commitment of this transaction and point to the shadow copy. Now the shadow copy itself becomes a redundant storage but the new copy it is being made. That means it could have made the update in the shadow copy, but then it will not be implemented with this atomicity and durability. So now the next fast that we will need to do is some next expensive and also some more efficient data storage mechanism so that we can implement this atomicity in a much more efficient way. Shadow copy is generally considered very popular in a smaller database but for a larger database where we need to store every file in the database and for small portion of the file we need to restore the database at its entirety will become a difficult task for us. So that is all for implementing atomicity and durability using this shadow copy technique. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.